once again, everyone, Chiefs Kingdom, and welcome back to RGR Football. If it's your first time here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And be sure to be alerted every time we have new content for you. We'll be putting up plenty of it leading up to the 2021 NFL season. If you're a Kansas City Chiefs fan, you don't want to miss any of that. This is the first in many takes I'm going to have on various players, be they draft picks, uh, UDFAs, or veteran free agents that come into Kansas City. Tonight we're going to start off with a player that I've already covered once in a draft crush leading up to the NFL draft, and that is Joshua Kando, the defensive end slash edge from Florida State University. He is a very promising player comp in the pro right now, in the pros right now, and that would be Jason Pierre-Paul. JPP came out of college with limited tape and a lot of upside, and he was so coveted going into the draft when he came out that he was picked at the 15th spot in the first round. You can't have enough edge rushers and guys that wake up that long and that tall and that fast and that explosive and that strong don't grow on trees. Well, Joshua Kando is no slouch. He's got the length, he's got the strength, and he's got the speed. So much so that he actually exceeded a lot of JPP's measurements. JPP was measured at six foot five, two 270 pounds coming out. Joshua Kando, depending on which scout you check with, is either six foot six or six foot seven. Measures in this 270 to 75 pound range, and he was faster and more explosive. JPP ran a 471 in the 40 yard dash. He ran a 467 in the shuttle drill, the short shuttle, and he jumped 30 and a half inches in the vert and nine and a half feet in the broad jump. Joshua Kando ran 465 in the 40. He ran a 435 in the short shuttle. Very explosive coming around the edge on those plays. He jumped 36 and a half inches, and he jumped a full foot longer than JPP did in the broad jump at 10 and a half feet. He is very explosive. He's very long. He's very strong. And like JPP, he wakes up with those genetics built in. He also has a very strong motor. As we've seen over the years, JPP has no lack of a motor. Joshua Kando has that motor, has that ability. There has been inconsistency, however, at the college level. And part of that might be due to the coaching situation there or something in-house. There seems to have been some question coming out of FSU as to um, the strength of the program or some of the people involved. And it seems to have affected some of the draft picks that are all seemingly super athletic and agile and just all have the same problem, a lack of consistency. Now, in the case of Joshua Kando, I believe the Chiefs saw in him, what I see is that he can be the next JPP but an even more explosive version. I think that they see him coming in, taking the coaching, and turning that corner, becoming a pro, being more consistent, learning better moves with his hands, but he already has multiple. He's not a single move player. He's got some bend, he's got some dip. He can dip and rip, and he's got slashing moves. He can be pushing up field, and if the quarterback climbs the pocket because of a lack of pressure by the defensive tackles, he can slash between the tackle and guard and cut the quarterback off as he tries to climb the ladder. And take him to the ground. While he's taking the quarterback or running back, if it's a handoff, to the ground, he also has another special skill, which I don't see a lot in rush ends, especially when they're first coming out of college. A number of times in his limited tape, I noticed that Joshua Kando has this little trick where the DBs have the peanut punch where they go and try to punch the ball out, or they're sort of getting close behind the guy to try to pop it out of the front. He wraps players up. And starts to take them to the ground. And as he's proceeding to take them to the ground, when they get about a foot away, it's then he strikes like a cobra. He slashes his hand in and tries to paw the ball out of the running back or quarterback's arm. And I saw multiple times he succeeded in doing that. And considering the limitations of his tape, the number of reps that were on there, to have it happen more than once shows that it's something he works on, it's something he's accomplished, and it's something he can have in his arsenal at the next level. Add to that his striking power. He's not a dirty hitter. He hits clean. He wraps guys up. And at least twice on his tape, again, I saw him hit a quarterback. On the one play, he hit him in the strike zone, the Major League Baseball strike zone, right where you want to hit the guy in the meat of his body. And then he hit him so hard, the concussive force popped the quarterback's helmet off of his head before they got to the ground. Another play, he wrapped the quarterback up. And as they slammed into the ground together, Josh being on the side, not on top of him, because on top is a penalty in the pros to his side, but pulled him down so hard. Again, when the quarterback hit, his helmet squirted halfway off his head with the chin strap rolling over the nose. Most of us who have played semi-pro level or above 
and especially in Division One and pros have been through that situation. It's not a fun place to be. It's a little bit sore when you're getting up and you don't want it happening a lot. Thankfully, hopefully this year with our revamped offensive line, we want to see Patrick Mahomes become victim to people like JPP like he was in the Super Bowl. And hopefully Joshua Kando will be dishing some of that out to the Kansas City Chiefs opponents. It's for all of these reasons and the fact that he also benched 22 reps at 225 pounds, which exceeded the 19 that JPP put up, that I feel Joshua Kando has every chance to make it in the pros and be an impact player. Final thing on that is he's going to be a rotational player in Kansas City, folks. That's what Spags likes. Steve Spagnola is famous for having a platoon of pass rushers that he'll keep fresh all game long. So when it's third and long, late in the fourth quarter, and you've got the other team by the throat, and they're down by a score or more, your pass rushers are coming off hot and hard off the edges while their opposing quarterback is trying to make plays. It's a recipe for disaster for Chiefs opponents this year. And trust me, we're going to have a lot of people playing from behind. Patrick Mahomes and that revamped offensive line. Looking forward to great things from Joshua Kando, rotating with Mike Dana and Taco Charlton and Wharton and Tim Ward and fill-in player X here, whatever all their guys that they bring along. There's going to be a lot of pass rush this year, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. Josh Kando's a winner. Mark it. Mark it down right now. Go Chiefs. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.